There's a lot of advice on how to approach technical interviews out there, but what does it look like from the other side of the table or monitor, I guess? And how can understanding the viewpoint of the interviewer help you win them over? I've conducted or been part of a number of interviews, mostly for mid to senior levels and small to mid-sized company. Here's a few things I've learned and I think can help. No one really reads your resume. HR probably has automated keyword software, they might do a skim over the first page for your initial call. I might do a quick glance just before the interview for anything interesting to ask, something unique that jumps out. But for the most part, I assume a resume is crafted to make you look like you know what you're doing. And I'd much rather hear that from you. The first interviews I was a part of were panel style, where the approach was to ask for an introduction, not pay attention, and then bombard them with 30 minutes of technical questions. That company always failed to find good people. Instead, I adopted the approach of asking about their background, actually paying attention, and then asking questions about the projects they've been involved in. Digging into what they worked on, what technology they used, why they used it, problems they ran into, decisions they made, and through conversation, it's easy to determine what role they played if they were in control of decisions, if they understood decisions when they weren't in control of them, or if they just coded based on the abstract requirements. And I think understanding the type of engineer they are is more useful than code puzzles. Sitting and watching someone solve code problems is a huge waste of my time. I get very little information doing that, and there's plenty of studies to show that performance under these stressful, abnormal conditions doesn't represent performance in a normal job environment. And beyond that, just being in a weird position lording over somebody as they code, judging them on a problem I already know the answer to is just not something I like to do. So if technical evaluation is required, I'd much rather send out a technical questionnaire pre-interview or possibly post depending on the overall process. Nothing too time intensive, just about a half hour or so worth of questions, a mix of concept questions and realistic code problems in the languages expected. Again, nothing over the top, just enough to verify that they have the coding capabilities of the position they are applying for. And sometimes people ask, what if they cheat and look it up though? Good, that's what they should be doing in their everyday job anyway. I don't want to hire somebody who doesn't Google anything. That just gets you a coworker who constantly asks questions they could have just Googled. And if they really went to extremes of cheating, it will come out in the conversation of the interview when they don't know why they did the things that they did. This method really helps when the candidate is willing to talk. Sometimes I've asked open-ended conversational questions and I get a one word response. Probably because many of us have been conditioned to expect a question and answer interrogation style interview. And I admit that it's something I definitely need to improve on is relaxing people into the conversation. But it really helps when a candidate is able to take a prompt and then expand on it to their personal experience. Be excited about your past work and enthusiastic to go into detail. One thing I like a lot more than whiteboard code is whiteboard architecture, designs, and process flows. You know, the things that people actually do on a whiteboard in the real world. This is a good exercise at all levels. Obviously, for an architect level position, you'd expect the ability to map out complex systems. But even at junior levels, it's good to see how they can map out pipelines, data models, infrastructure, or whatever is relevant to the position. This is a good way to see how they solve problems, communicate decisions, ask questions, all while doing something that is commonly done on the job. The important thing to me is breaking the antagonistic interview style of trying to find a reason to reject someone. It's a common method for big tech companies because they have endless hordes of applicants to filter through. But most companies don't. There's a shortage of data professionals and most companies miss out on quality people. With those first panel interviews I did, that was the goal. Get a candidate in, assault them with technical questions, and then find a reason to reject them. If after the interview we got together and everyone said, well, we don't have a reason not to hire them, they'd get an offer. It's really not surprising we had a really high turnover rate, terrible team coordination, and people who just didn't work well together. So I've definitely adopted the wanting a candidate to be successful approach. We've been in the interviewee's shoes, and we know how awkward and stressful interviews can be, and we want to find awesome people to work with. And most importantly, we want to stop doing interviews. They take up a lot of time and mental energy. Going into an interview with the assumption of competence and focusing on skills around communication, teamwork, and fit just seems like a better way to do it. Before going into an interview on either side, it's important to think about what makes for successful data people. By looking for or displaying those interview traits, you'll improve your interviewing success. And to help you think about that, you'll want to watch this video on successful data people.